modified data is serialized again and given back to the user. This is uh, very good for, for an attack, and you'll see later why. So why do people do that? The reason for that is PHP code is usually very old, and they all learned programming in PHP 4 days. And in PHP 4, it was not so dangerous to use unserialized because uh, there were no destructors, so there was no unintended code execution. And wake up uh, methods were very, very, very seldom, and you have to program your, on your own. So usually no one used wake up, so there was no danger at all, except for vulnerabilities in the unserialized parlor, and we had a lot of them in the past. So the next thing you would see in uh, modern PHP applications is that they always um, use some kind of caching because they're usually too slow, so they cache a lot in memory, in the database, or in files. And of course, uh, files are still the most uh, often used thing to, to store big data arrays. So um, you will see that a lot of PHP applications store serialized data in files. What does this mean? This means, first of all, when, you st when the application is able to store serialized data in files, this means there must be some directory on the web server that is writable, because otherwise it can, cannot be caged. It's not necessary that this um, is inside um, at the document root. It can be anywhere on the server, maybe the temp directory or a subdirectory of the temp directory. But uh, there must be a single directory that's writable. So this also means when there's a file up of vulnerability in the application, there must be a single directory that's maybe writable for the file upload. And um, normally when you can like upload something in a temporary directory, um, yeah, and the temporary directory is not accessible, that's usually not a problem for an application. So it's a file upload vulnerability maybe, but uh, it's not ranked so high in severity because uh, you cannot do anything with it. But when you take the caching files into consideration, now uh, when you can run, uh, an upload a file to this temporary directory, you can upload maybe a cache file that is used later and unserialized. So you can un uh, attack unserialized again. So the next part where you see unserialized and serialized very often is um, when, you s when you look at the web application um, programming interface, the, the web API. Uh, many PHP style web applications will provide a serialized and unserialized way to maybe talk REST. They don't use JSON, they use uh, serialized, unserialized. Um, the most popular application like this is WordPress. So when you have a WordPress blog, it will talk from time to time with api.wordpress.org in uh, PHP serialized and unserialized form. And uh, the problem here is it's talking HTTP. So any kind of HTTP man in the middle attack can uh, inject malicious uh, serialized data into your unserialized on, on your blog. Um, actually, this example is really taken from uh, WordPress. So you see it will send some requests to the WordPress API and check if there's a, a new version of a plugin. And uh, then we'll unserialize the code. And um, yeah. And if WordPress would have interesting objects, this will be a rem remote code execution vulnerability. But luckily, there's no such object. So only if you have a vulnerability in the parser, you can maybe attack WordPress. The next thing where you find unserialized is um, with databases. Um, there are a lot of PHP applications that store uh, settings or sessions in a serialized form in the database. This means if you have a SQL injection vulnerability in a PHP application, you maybe can modify the field that is serialized. With all the PHP applications, this was very tricky because uh, you cannot stack queries with MySQL in, uh, in early PHP versions. But uh, nowadays, especially all these SEND framework applications, they use uh, PDO MySQL to access uh, the MySQL database. And PDO MySQL has no protection against stacked queries. So when you have an application with PDO MySQL, you can uh, inject the usual 
semicolon drop, drop tables. And uh, this was not possible previously. But now you can do that with modern applications, and so you can modify all the database. OK, when you can modify all the database, maybe you can do other interesting things, but you can still attack unserialize. Um, actually, um, I did an audit for our sister company, uh, Mayflower, who develops a PH project. Uh, I did this uh, in February, I think, and they, had an, uh, they have unserialized of uh, database content, and they also had a SQL injection, so I was able to unserialize something and uh, execute arbitrary code. The last thing I want to uh, get into is um, a vulnerability I disclosed uh, during the month of PHP security in May. It was actually the last one uh, on the last day. And um, the thing is that there is um, a problem in the session deserializer. And the problem is whenever a session key starts with an exclamation mark, uh, this deserializer gets confused. And so if you as a, have um, an application that allows you to, um, to put arbitrary keys into a session or to, uh, to have a prefix, arbitrary prefix for session variables, which sometimes happens, you see some examples down there, um, when something like this exists in your application, then you can more or less in inject exclamation mark keys with uh, arbitrary values and now the, pr the problem is when this gets deserialized during the uh, session load, it will confuse the deserializer and suddenly you can inject arbitrary serialized data into the session. Okay, if, uh, if the application allows to put anything in the session, then you can put anything in, but these are always strings. But with due, due to this vulnerability, you can put anything serialized in there. So you can attack unserialized, or, or you can just create arbitrary objects anyway in the, in the session, maybe a valid user object. Normally you can just inject a string, but with this vulnerability you can inject an arbitrary uh, user object if your application has something like this. So these were the vulnerability classes that could allow attacks against unserialized, but to do property-oriented programming you need more. You need, first of all, you need uh, this deserializing of malicious input, but you also need um, classes that are usable for your pop chain, your property-oriented programming chain. And a class is usable for the pop chain if um, it can start the pop chain. Uh, okay, first of all, the class must be available in, your, in the application and uh, at the time of the unserialize. Then you need something to start the pop chain. You need something to transfer the control from one object to the other. And in the end, you need um, some object with interesting operations. I will go on this later. So first of all, class availability. When an application unserializes something and it creates objects, then you can only create the objects that uh, PHP knows about at this moment. So this means if you unserialize an object called X, A, B, C, D, then PHP will check if this object is available, if this class is available, and if it's not available, it will create a so-called incomplete class, which is nothing more like a dummy object with, uh, with properties. So this is not usable. Um, so basically this means you can only use uh, classes for your attack that are already included at the moment of the unserialize. This limits very much the amount of classes you can use for the attack. On the other hand, um, modern PHP applications have the possibility to register a so-called autoload function, and, which is a class autoloader. So in the case PHP doesn't find the object, it will first call the autoloader, and the autoloader can check if it knows the class or knows how to load the class or create the class. <coughs> so. In modern application, you sometimes are able to uh, instance every single object of the application because the autoloader will just load the right object at the right time. So, I already said you are really limited in how your pop chain will look like and what methods you can use. So, the problem in PHP is you have to, to find a way to start the chain at all. So. Um, 
And this means your unserialized must somehow, or the code afterwards must somehow trigger execution of the objects you, uh, um, you just created. And I already mentioned there's wake up and there's destruct. These are most obvious uh, ways to start a pop chain. But there are some other magic methods in PHP that might allow you to start a pop chain also. This is a two string. So every time you have an object and it gets concatenated to a string, it will call the two string. So maybe you find a usable two string method. Um, when a method is called on an object and the uh, method is not known, then it will try to find the call uh, magic method. If it exists, then it will execute that. Um, and get and set are for magic properties, so the getter and setter. Uh, in real world, so far, I only started uh, pop chains with wake up and destruct. So uh, the others are theoretically possible, but so far I haven't found an application that is vulnerable to this. And the example just shows you have a class, I call it pop starter, and it has a destructor. So when you unserialize this class and it will get destroyed, the destruct will be executed. In this case, there's nothing in there, so nothing would be happening. So the next thing you always need in, uh, in a pop chain is a way to transfer control from one object to another, to the method of another. Because you usually will not find a destructor that does something very interesting for you. In the past, you could find destructors that were deleting files, so you could delete a file immediately. Or you find uh, something that writes a log file, so you could write a file to the disk. But most of the time, uh, the destructor will do nothing else than call like another method of another object. So you need a way to, to transfer the control from one object to the other. The most obvious thing is that you have a property that gets dereferenced and the method of this, of this new object is, uh, is executed. You see this in the example, the property 2 is used as object and uh, the method B is executed on the property, on the other object. Another way would be that property 3 is also an object and the data property is assigned some value. So you maybe can hit a magic setter in another object. And the third thing is uh, a property is appended to a string so you could hit a two string method of another object. So this always transfers execution from one object to the other. And usually you want to chain many of them until you reach uh, a method that is usual for you. And these are six, uh, the, the end of pop chains are usually uh, classes with interesting methods. This means an interesting operation is, um, yeah, you can see this, file access, database access, access to the session, to access to the mail function. Sometimes you even get the ex execution of PHP code or inclusion of PHP code. And um, in this example, this would allow, this uh, would allow to uh, load an arbitrary file in memory, mail it to any email address, and in the end attempt to delete the file. So if you find this somewhere in the application, you can uh, completely control what it does because uh, you have uh, control of all the properties and all the properties are um, required to um, do what you want. So you can choose any file because you can uh, set the temp file property. You can choose the to of the email, the subject of the email. And yeah, most of the times files you want to steal are not writable anyway, so the unlink will just uh, error. And you see this is implemented in the method B, so you would have to combine it with the previously found uh, code flow transfer object that called, uh, that called uh, the method B of property 2. And because you also have control about property 2, you can just tell property 2 to be an object of type operation. So to make this more clear, I will give an example. The example is PWIC. PIVIC is uh, a very popular open source user tracking system. It's uh, supposed to be very similar to Google Analytics. And I don't know about America, but in Germany it's used in many, 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 many places. 
and uh, all the 